priest's sermon has made you feel a little drowsy. Then as your eyelids begin to droop, suddenly you can smell burning and hear crackling flames. Faint screams as well, and devilish chuckling interspersed with angels singing. There's a sudden warmth behind your back, and when you turn around, you're confronted with gleeful demons' faces on the whitewashed wall. There's one turning round and beckoning to you, the nudge from your mother instantly you're wide awake and turn back to face the priest again. But you can still hear the flames and the laughter. Throughout the Middle Ages, church hierarchy emphasised teaching all lay people the deadly sins and heavenly virtues. In the 4th century AD, a Greek monastic theologian, Evagrius of Pontus, was the first to draw up a list of eight offences and wicked human passions, the deadly sins. In the late 6th century, Pope Gregory the Great reduced the list to seven, folding vainglory into pride, acedia into sadness, and adding envy. Sadness was also later changed to sloth by the church, but not until the 17th century. They were, in order of increasing seriousness, lust, gluttony, avarice, sadness, anger, envy, and pride. One method of teaching the deadly sins and heavenly virtues was through church wall paintings, a constant reminder to those obliged to never miss a church service. In the village of Chaldon in Surrey is the church of St. Peter and St. Paul. The church contains a unique wall painting depicting heaven and hell with the purgatorial ladder or ladder of souls and the associated seven deadly sins. It is believed that the wall painting dates from between the years of 1170 and 1200 and is thought to be the oldest in England. It measures 5.2 metres wide by 3.35 metres high. Various aspects of the work suggest that it was painted by an artist monk who travelled the area at the time, as similar figures appear in other church wall paintings in England. However, the name of this monk remains unknown. The wall painting was whitewashed over in the 1600s in response to the royal injunctions of Edward VI and the Reformation which abolished paintings in churches. In 1869, the rector, Reverend Henry Shepherd, arranged for decorators to prepare the walls for a new coat of lime wash. Before they started, he noticed signs of colour and work was stopped. The Surrey Archaeological Society, along with J.G. Waller, undertook the cleaning, restoration and preservation of the wall painting. More recently, in August 1989, the wall painting was cleaned and conserved by Wolfgang Gartner, conservator and director of the Canterbury Wall Paintings Workshop. This video takes a close look at each of the elements of the wall painting and attempts to explain their meaning. The lower half of the wall painting represents hell and depicts those seven deadly sins. The upper half represents heaven and its access. Let's start by taking a close look at the lower half. Starting at the lower right, we see the tree of knowledge in which evil lurks, in branches, in the form of the serpent, the source of all evil. This is the beginning of the story of the fall of man. As ascendants of Adam and Eve, original sin has brought the souls in hell to this, and their failure to obtain a redeeming grace in life, or to be purged of their sins in purgatory, has sealed their fate forever. Two demons hold up a razor-spiked beam upon which souls attempt to perform tasks foredoomed to hopelessness, since there is, after all, no hope in hell. First the blacksmith is missing his anvil, the spinner a distaff, the potter a wheel, and the mason a chisel. The dishonest milkman is just mounting the bridge of spikes. He gave short measure in life and now has to carry a brimming bowl over the bridge. 
Below the razor spike beam, the usurer sits astride a fire with a bag of money hanging around his neck and wearing a belt from which hangs three more, right hand raised in helpless protest. He is being held up by two demons. Money pours from his mouth. Depicting the deadly sin of avarice or greed, he has to count all the money while it pours from his mouth. To the usurer's left, two figures represent the deadly sin of envy. A demon puts his hand on the aged figure of a soul who is grasping a younger companion as though envious of his youth. To his right, depicting the deadly sin of lust, a man and a woman embrace while a smaller demon, with a grimly disapproving expression, grasps the woman by the shoulder, thus curtailing any kind of consummation. To the left of the ladder, which divides the painting vertically, a demon grasps and plucks souls with a fork from the ladder of salvation. Souls try but fail to climb upwards on it with some shown desperately clinging to its edges, while others fall headlong. Next to this demon, a woman's wrist is being grasped and a hand possibly gnawed by a demonic wolf. Self-satisfaction in her hands depicts the deadly sin of pride, or perhaps she fed her pets too well in life, but ignored the starving. Above her, depicting the deadly sin of anger, two people, a woman on the right and a man on the left who are falling off a demon, fight over the possession of a hunting horn or cornucopia. To the left, two demons are throwing murderers or unfortunates into a cauldron where they are tortured over a fire, while another falls headlong into it. At the feet of the demon, to the right of the cauldron, is the drunken pilgrim clutching a bottle of wine and depicting the deadly sin of gluttony. He has sold his cloak, his badge of office, to buy the drink. In the Middle Ages, gluttony was regularly depicted as a liking for strong drink rather than food. At the far left, below the arm of a gigantic demon, three women move miserably, depicting the seventh and deadly sin of sadness while beneath them a demon beast lies on its back gnawing their feet. At the foot of the ladder is the symbol of life, probably an acanthus plant. Below the painting to the left is the original consecration cross, cleverly incorporated into the picture by the artist. Now let's look at the upper half of the wall painting, the entrance to heaven perhaps. On the far left, a demon drags souls by a rope from hell, only a hint of legs remaining due to damage to the edge of the painting. Archangel Michael stands ready to weigh the soul's good deeds in the pan to his left against the bad deeds in the pan to his right. The demon has a hand on the scales, trying to weigh it down with bad deeds. A penitent appears to be pleading or pointing out to Saint Michael what the devil is up to. To the right of Michael, an angel leads three saved souls towards the upper part of the ladder in order to climb to heaven. They're obviously female, possibly the three Marys, who went to the tomb of Jesus after the crucifixion and found it empty, singled out for their special holiness. Above is a flying angel appearing to carry another, even more deserving soul directly to heaven. The church leaflet speculates that it could be one of the thieves crucified alongside Christ. Our Lord on the cross had said, This day shalt thou be with me in paradise. On the right of the ladder, a standing angel encourages two souls to climb up the ladder. The church leaflet asserts that these souls are Enoch and Elijah, two of the righteous of Old Testament times. Both Standing Angel and the Flying Angel above are both carrying speech scrolls, both unreadable now. The church leaflet surmises that the words on the Flying Angel banner could have read, Open ye the gates that the righteous may enter. On the far right is a depiction of the harrowing of hell. Satan lies bound, not on a bed of flames, but on a giant worm-like creature, a cockatrice perhaps, extended to its full length with huge eyes and the beak of a cockerel. The creature bites Satan's head while Christ stands over him, driving the banner staff into his mouth. Redeemed souls, hands extended in supplication, proceed out of the flames towards Christ's extended right hand. 
Above the ladder is the demi-figure of Christ in the act of benediction, with the sun on his right and the moon on his left, all set in a cloud, representing heaven that bisects the picture forming a holy cross. In conclusion, the early church needed ways of getting the various Bible messages across to a mostly uneducated congregation. What better way than informing them via church wall painting showing the horrors of hell and the hope of heaven? This completes our tour of the Chaldon Purgatorial Wall Painting. We hope that you have found it useful, informative and not too terrifying. If you get the chance, please go and see it at the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul in Chaldon, Surrey, England.